Welcome back to the channel. It has been a while since I've done anything to the FC. So I've been needing to put an electric fan on this car as well as the battery. So I've been having some issues with the older battery cables. They're just, I think they're just corroded inside. So what happens is it doesn't want to start all the time. You have to wiggle these around to get the wire in the correct position and it not wanting to start. And then me having to go inside the car like 700 times to get it to finally get to the correct position. So I'm just want to replace all this. I'm going to end up using a small lithium lightweight battery. I'm exactly sure if I'm going to put it right here or if I'm going to put it behind the passenger seats. This battery is wired up. I'll finally be able to rip this thing around turns because I've never had a battery tie down. Plus, I'm going to have the electric fan finally, which I designed this fan shroud, had Sen Cut Send bend it. I was going to have Hayden weld it, but for this one, I need to, I want to actually add another strap coming from here over on both sides. But that's a lot nicer to have an electric fan, fan controller, and everything's really nice and clean. To do the battery relocation and to do the power, the positive and the negative wire, you have to remove the transmission harness slash the alternator harness, which would probably be easier, a lot easier on a lift. And it also is a lot easier if you don't have an AC compressor. So I did have a good functioning AC compressor, but this is an 87 and it's R12. So getting it filled with R12 at this point really didn't make sense. I will have AC in this car. Since I deleted that, I also just decided to delete the smog pump. So now I can see the turbocharger and I actually could see all the stuff that you couldn't see before. And I probably need to give this girl a pressure wash. But now that that stuff's gone, I was able to remove that front forward pulley because it's a three piece lower crank pulley and that gave me a lot more room towards the fan this probably the water pump probably could be a little bit smaller and if i wanted to oh i guess i can't because the alternator is so much further back but yeah i have the new alternator i wish i had a different intake manifold and then i wish i didn't have the top mount intercooler but i really don't want to do a front mount on this if i do do something i'll do a water to air but removing the AC compressor also gave me a bunch of access to everything else, which made this harness come out quite a bit easier. I have all the loom off of the harness. Luckily enough, the CAS wiring is all good, but some of the connectors, the signal for the starter, this plug doesn't look very good. Alternator, like it's lost all its sheathing. So you can see bare wire right there. So I might cut this back a little bit and then recrimp it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make all my ground straps. I'm gonna make a ground strap from the engine block to the frame rail. And most likely I'm gonna mount the battery behind the passenger seat. So from the passenger seat, somewhere where there already is a bolt that I can use. I like to use a lot of factory bolts so I'm not drilling and tapping and doing a bunch of stuff just so I'm not messing up the chassis. What I usually do is I use two watt. A lot of people might say this is overkill, but if you use 2 watt, you never have to worry about any of your grounding straps or any of your power cables. It is pretty thick. It's meant for 600 volts. I mean, with a long cable, the larger it is, once you get into the summer months, if you use something that's like a, I think this is eight gauge right here, the same gauge that, I actually think that's a little bit bigger. Yeah, the same gauge that the normal starter wire was. The longer that length is and the more heat that gets in it, you might get into a situation where I'm, I'm at right now where the car clicks, it doesn't actually start because there's not enough, you know, there's, there's too much, there's too much resistance to actually, and there's too much heat. And the more you try, the more heat, you know, builds up and then it's, you know, either melts the wiring or, or does something crazy. So. If you just use 2 watt in the beginning, I'm gonna use this for the starter to the battery and the alternator, I'm gonna use the eight gauge, which is perfectly fine, which is an upgrade from this little tiny, look at this, this was the factory alternator wire. Right here, it's gonna be a big upgrade. So it lets your alternator charge your battery a lot more efficiently. It's not as thin, you don't have to worry about it burning through 
Also, you can use larger terminals. So I'm gonna pull off that little block that's on the back of the alternator that this little tiny, look at this little tiny grommet, goes to, and we'll use an eight gauge grommet, which is down here. And then I use heat shrink and a butane torch or propane, whatever this is. Yeah, this one's propane. And you just heat up the fitting, push solder into it, then you push the cable into it, and then you put heat shrink, adhesive line heat shrink around it, and the cable is gonna last probably longer than your car. So let's figure out where these ground straps are gonna be. So all I did was I came from here where this AC compressor would normally bolt, the bracket and the AC compressor itself, used one of the 14 millimeter bolts, then came over down here, really nice and tidy, right onto the frame rail. But now I just need to do one inside the car. Get the battery cable through the firewall. A lot of people run them back here by the clutch master and then route it along the frame rail, kind of by the steering shaft. And I really don't like that. So then it's one super long cord. But my Speedo cable, I bought a brand new cable. It broke almost probably instantly within 100 miles. So this could work with or without a Speedo cable. I 3D printed a pass-through. So all it is is a bolt. And there are some other options out there if you want to enlarge the hole. But this way, it's the exact same size as the holes. So that's a 24.5 millimeter hole. Then you still have quite a bit of room if you used something that wasn't you know, didn't have a nut on there, it was just like a piece of all thread, it'd work a little bit better too. I might revise this design later on with some brass, but for now it'll work perfectly fine. Then I could have the cable go directly from there down to the starter and directly up to the alternator. It'll be super clean. There won't be a bunch of, you know, the wire won't have to come all the way over here. You know, I now have the battery mounted right behind the passenger seat. A lot of RX-7 guys do this but I have the battery cable ran and it goes through right there. And how I did it was I ran the cable on the passenger side. A lot of people run it on the driver's side and then put it through that grommet on the firewall. And then you can't really access your fuse box because the wire's in the way. And then it's just kind of sticking out right next to this footrest. Most likely you're never gonna see that because you don't look under the dash for it. But I found a cleaner. You run it behind the carpet, right on the top of this ledge. Looks really clean. Can't see it. Then you run it on the back side of the HVAC assembly. And then if you remove the rear washer cord and move it up to this next pin, the thing that it's in fits a two watt cable perfectly. So then it's nice and held. And then you just put that piece of trim. It's like a piece of Kind of like compressed cardboard. I'm actually gonna remake them out of carbon fiber because I broke one of mine pulling the clips. And then the cable comes up and I need to zip tie this because I don't have any zip ties right here, but it comes up right here. It's all hidden behind everything and it goes right to the battery. I loomed and kind of fixed some wiring issues that I had with the car. And then we have the firewall connector for the battery cable and it goes through the spot where your speedo cable usually comes out. And I'm probably gonna end up doing some GPS gauges since my gauge cluster is kind of iffy anyway. And then it just gives you a really nice location. So then the battery cable goes down to the starter, comes up to the alternator. I don't have it going to a fuse, but then I also have it coming over to this little fuse panel right here because it still needs power. And then I'm gonna also run my fans off of this fuse panel. So. Let's try to fire her up. I hope she starts because, I don't know, it was a little bit of stuff and she was having some finicky issue, issues before, but I think they're all battery related. We have lights right there. And I haven't started her up in probably a month, so hopefully she's not too angry. That was actually nice. Oh man, this is way nicer. Oh, she starts up so nice. So what I'm gonna do now is pull her into the driveway and I want to wash 
the engine bay because it's disgusting. Now that I have the battery up here removed and the AC compressor and also the smog pump and all this other randomness and it's all pretty dirty, I'm going to get under here, pressure wash as much as I can. Tranny's pretty grimy, the uh, subframe's a little bit grimy, and then you can see the front of the case and the side, which I could never pressure wash before, and then the subframe I'll be able to get to. So uh, yeah, let's get all this cleaned up, and uh, I'll just hit it with a bunch of oven cleaner. It'll probably clean it up perfectly, look, make it all look brand new. All right, she's looking way better. So there's still some oil that's stuck on the aluminum, but I think with a few more pressure washes, it'll be nice and clean like the rest of the engine. But another good thing is I have some spray and it makes everything look brand new, like a brand new car. And then I don't have to worry about listening to the clutch fan anymore, the uh, AC compressor or that uh, smog pump. So they would rattle around and it really didn't sound that great. So I'm gonna try to fire her up after just uh, aggressively pressure washing her for the first time um, since I got it out of the field. But now, I mean, pretty clean for what it is. So now for some reason, everything is clean, ready to go, and I have zero power. The door lines aren't working, nothing's working. The relay's not clicking. So what I was checking was power going from my block or the alternator over to this fuse panel. And for some reason, it seems like I'm not getting any power. So I need to get a voltmeter over here to try to check this stuff out. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing this. Um, I think I was overreacting a little bit. I got a volt meter and I checked all the, uh, the power wires and I just didn't have the inside lug tight so it wasn't getting contact. So now we're 100% good to go. What I'm gonna do is drive over to the car wash so I could use the vacuum since I don't have my shop back here. I'm gonna pull the seats out, pretty much vacuum out a bunch of stuff. Mostly I wanna get all the old window tint that keeps flaking off the back window. It's just like all over the car. And uh, I'll actually be able to finally drive the car, which will be really nice. It's been probably a month, maybe two. She lives! Let's, uh, yeah, I wanna clean all this random window tint stuff that's flaking off the back window. It's everywhere. But yeah, she sounds good. No more smog pump, no more AC compressor, no more fan clutch. Whew. I can't wait to hear what she's gonna sound like. And I actually can rip her now. The battery isn't always strapped down, but at least it's not strapped, not strapped down in the engine bay. I think my, uh, my master cylinder sitting died. I mean, it's it's literally almost all the way to the floor and it just finally gets pedal. So maybe, maybe I'll have to go over there, hopefully. You know, I do have the e-brake, I'll just be careful. Man, she, she feels great. Actually feels a lot like quicker. She didn't feel slow before, man. It's got everything cleaned up. She is feeling great. Feels like so much, like just a little bit more pep without all that BS on there. But yeah, man, and now I can actually rip her around turns and not have to worry about it. Uh, the master cylinder definitely needs to be changed. I think I'm only working the rear brakes. So I'm gonna order a brand new master cylinder. Probably do the clutch master as well as a slave cylinder on the tranny. And uh, just get everything a little bit, a little bit better. So I'm happy that she's nice and clean. I need to wipe everything down, but yeah. I'm so happy I could drive the FC again. So nice. But she sounds so much better. Don't have all that rattling from the clutch fan anymore. Or, you know, I had the AC compressor on here. I had that smog pump and everything was just rattling around. Now she just sounds super, super clean. Like just like a 13V should sound. And uh, I think all I need to do now, in the next video, I'll hook all this fan stuff up. And I left this lug right here so I could just hook up the power wire there and uh, right here and uh, yeah, I'll just keep kind of modifying some stuff. I want to do a different turbo eventually and some other stuff, but I think the main thing I'm going to do is that master cylinder is leaking and that's where you can see took all the thing off down there, I'm guessing. So I'll replace both those. 
the slave and uh, she'll be fun. I was just ripping her around and I could actually do some nice corners without having to worry, the, worry about the battery falling into the fan. Finally back home, super excited. The FC is finally a little bit more dialed in. Just getting the battery relocated to behind the passenger seat was a big relief because most of the time when I was cornering, I was always worried that battery would fall onto the radiator and just cause a bunch of chaos. And all the wiring was also just really deteriorated with everything kind of removed, the smog pump, the AC pump, redoing all that wiring. She feels a lot more peppy. Um, before there was kind of like this hesitation where when you kind of try to accelerate, you want to hesitate for probably like five to 10 seconds. Now it doesn't have that. The only concern I have is that master cylinder. So once I fix the master, I'm most likely I have, I have a pair of stainless steel brake lines I'm gonna put on this as well. And I'll probably do new rotors and pads. And since I'm too tall with the FC and the FD to wear a helmet in the car, I can't really take either of them to the track and track them at the road course. So I'll most likely just do some stuff in the mountains and just do some like tube stuff which, or toge, however you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. But I'm really happy that she is where she is. Hopefully this helped some people out with a different way to route the battery cable and relocate the battery and then get it through the firewall because there is a bunch of different write-ups out there and uh, most of them just have it going through that driver little grommet, which to me is just a bunch of just wiring, extra wiring running over there that you don't need. But I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.